sell some cheap sunglasses. Hey, it's Dave. Welcome back to my channel. I thought I'd show you um, the proper way to play Cheap Sunglasses by ZZ Top. And uh, and then I'd go into a usual rant or two. So uh, anyway, let's just get real quick started on this. Um, we have uh, the guitar is tuned in standard except for the E string on the top. This is a D. So we have E, A, D, G. And if you watch um, Billy Gibbons play it, you can see that he's playing this riff here. Um, I play it here because, uh, well, yeah, with well, my middle finger, just because of efficiency. So anyway, most of the time I see people playing this song, they're all playing it like, and that's not right. If you listen to the record and you listen to him live and you watch him play it, he's playing it so the fifth is only, um, so this would be a fifth, that would be a fifth. Those are all fifths. The fifth only happens on the G and the C, so it's really like, when he gets to the F, it's a six. So he's picking with his thumb and his finger. I think even he has a pick and he's he's hybrid picking it, but it's like like that. And then so I'm on the D string and the E and the low E string, and the D string's open to the G F. And then you do the exact same thing on the fifth string and the third string. That's just a C chord. And I play it just like, like. And then we go back to that riff. And this is just a slide of one, two, three from two to three. And uh, I suggest you watch him live playing it. Um, in fact, I'll post in the video a link to him live playing it so you can watch him play it that way. And um, that's basically the main riff of the song. After that, the rest you can kind of figure out. I just wanted to get out how you really play the main riff to the song when I see people play it. And I brought it up to people. In fact, my band, one of my bandmates wanted to do it. And he says uh, he started playing it. I'm like, yeah, if we do it, we're not doing it like that, which was this way. Because it's like, you know. Um, which brings me to the thing of, to the thought of, I should say, is who are you playing for? You know, when, uh, when I play, I'm playing to myself in the audience. Like if I was in the audience, what would I want to hear? And I want to hear it done right. I hear when guys do it that way and instantly it doesn't sound right to me. So I, I want to play to me, which is the person who I think would be, uh, more picky. But, and that's why I like to play things to more exact of how it goes um, in cover band type of situations. You know, and it's also why I like players like Johnny Marr and Robin Guthrie and some of these players that are real uh, textured and layered in sound because there's so much interesting stuff going on that it just becomes interesting. And I've seen uh, Cocteau Twins live many times and he has like... All, like a lot of background players playing some of his parts and then he's playing the main part and it's, it's great to watch play live it really is <laughs> well isn't that special so i wanted to talk about something that was a little bit in the news um i had commented on twitter about it and uh nobody ever commented back actually i commented to boy george who made a comment and uh i replied back if anybody wants to follow me on twitter i'm at the big angry is my Twitter. So please, if you feel like following me, follow me. 
So what happened was Lana Del Rey, who's this singer that I think she's completely affected. It's completely like a manufactured, um, it's crappy in my opinion. That's just my opinion. And I'm not here to argue her talent or lack of thereof. I don't care. So Lana Del Rey posted on Twitter that Radiohead's publishing has been like harassing her. They want 100% of her publishing for her song, Get Free, and she offered them 40%. So um, the way the publishing works is, you know, you have the music and you have the words. And I see a lot of people on Twitter, and I don't want to call them uneducated on the subject, but let's just say they're uneducated on the subject. Are saying that, oh, Radiohead got sued for it. They don't have the right or the ability to go sue somebody else. So I'm going to give you a little background of what's going on. Radiohead came up with a song called Creep. The song got sued by the publishing of Albert Hammond and Mike Hazelwood, who wrote The Air That I Breathe for the Hollies. And if you listen to it, there's a lot of similarities. It's basically the, the you know, it goes from the one chord to the three major, to the four major, to the four minor. And that's the, and basically that's the crux of it. And anyways, Radiohead ended up giving those guys publishing so if you look up the publishing for creep or who wrote it you'll see the guys in radiohead and those two guys mike hazelwood and albert hammond because that's what they want in the suit so now this publishing company or this publishing that owns that song creep with all those guys are now going after lana del rey for this song get free and the question is should they 100 percent yes her song is almost identical to Creep. And boy, George's comment was to the fact that he didn't hear it. Well, he either, he either didn't hear it because, number one, he's lying or he's deaf. And I don't know which one it was. Now, boy, George was in a lawsuit years ago for the song Comma Chameleon because the guy who wrote Handyman, the song made famous by James Taylor later in the early 70s or mid-70s, and then... Okay, was it in the 80s? I think it was like 76, maybe. I don't even know, but whatever. But you remember, comma, 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 comma. Well, anyways, so comma chameleon got sued, and they ended up having to pay that writer, which I thought was a little ridiculous as a stretch, because someone says comma, 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 and you can't say comma, 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 chameleon. Whatever. To me, that's like a stretch. However, this song is identical to Creep. In melody, music... So let's just say the music's exact. Those guys that all wrote Creep, including ha Hazelwood and, and, and Hammond, deserve 50% of her publishing, in my opinion. Just on the music alone, because it's exact. I mean, it's, it doesn't even try to coyly cover it. It's exact. And as far as the melody goes and everything else, all she did was change the lyrics. And it's to me, it's almost like such a derivative work that... um. Yeah, I don't know why she's bellyaching. She should be giving, offering a lot more. And, um, you know, uh, I don't know why she didn't preemptive strike and put them on the publishing to begin with. You know, when the Rolling Stones did a song called um, Anybody See My Baby. Um, I can't remember whose daughter it was, but I think it was Keith's. Or was it Mix? I don't know. Whoever has a daughter. One of those two played it for their daughter. And the daughter said, you better call Katie Lang because that's constant craving. Well, the Stones just decided to preemptive strike and they put Katie Lang's name in the writing. And uh, Katie Lang was surprised when she started getting all kinds of money. She's not going to say anything and she was thrilled about it. Uh, but that's like a nice way to go about it is to give them credit if... Uh, you know, and it's also in that particular thing, it's not really the same audience. But I think in the Radiohead case, she's like, it's like maybe a younger crowd, maybe slightly younger, but there might be some overlap. Maybe not. I mean, just because I see the Radiohead bashing and I'm like, Radiohead was a very uh, interesting band. I, I liked a lot of this stuff. Um, Karma Police is great. And I think uh, High and Dry is great. I mean, I think they had like, they had something, you know, that they were a great band. And uh, fresh and new for the time. And this Lana Del Rey, it's like, you've got to be kidding me. And she says, I love her, her argument for it was, well, I, I didn't steal that. She's acting like, 
Oh, I didn't know. I, I never heard that song before. Come on, you don't know anything. Don't give me the babe in the woods routine, Karen. I've listened to those wiretaps, and I've heard you on a telephone. Anyways, it'll be an interesting case because I can't wait to see her lose. And uh, I think as it gets closer to the date, um, her and the her publishing and the Radiohead publishing will probably come to terms. My guess would be, I mean, out of court, they'd probably settle for 75. I can imagine, although I know Radiohead is really perturbed about it. Well, they're publishing. But anyways, that's um, that's what's been going on in the news anyways. And if you, again, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at the Big Angry. The NAM show is coming up this month. I will not be going. I, uh, I hate the show. I find it to be uh, a busy guitar center on a bad weekend. Oh, Fender, you have a new guitar. Now you, you, you've decided you're going to go with bigger frets, and now we have to sit there and look at it yeah, for the whole year of, oh, wow, look at this. They added a color. Oh, Fender added a color to their guitars. Oh, my God. We should, we should all go to the NAMM show for that. Pathetic. Yeah, it's it's become a joke, you know. You walk through the place and it's like, why is why is that string company have a line? Oh, Ingve signing signing autographs. Great. Yeah, it's not for me. Um, a lot of companies don't go. It doesn't matter. Who cares? I mean, I don't even want to waste two minutes on the name show. I just think it sucks. But people make videos about it all the time, like, um, oh, here's me walking around the NAMM show. It's like, oh, wow. I don't know. I just, I, I have a lot of friends that enjoy going because they perform at the show and they like to go and drink and stay in the hotels. And basically, uh, it's a lost weekend for them. And for that, I can understand. But as far as to hang out and see the new gear, boring. Oh, the other great thing is there's like nothing good to eat inside the place. So it's like, then you're starving and it's like, oh, I can go get an Elio's pizza for six bucks. Yeah, I think I'm going to stay home. Yeah. So on that note, I hope everyone's good. I have a couple of ideas for some videos coming up that should be pretty fun. And uh, lots more to talk about. But for now, I'm out of here. Very good. <laughs> How's that for a topper? <laughs> You're right on target. You're right on the money. Everything you said. You hit the nail right on the head with your comments, what you're saying today. You're 150% correct.